One of the reasons we like to do these surveys and work with chief economists or with chief human resources officers is because these are the people at the front lines of trying to understand where things are going. And what's really interesting with the latest chief economist outlook is that there is a complete split down the middle in terms of those that are predicting recession, 45%, and the 45% that are predicting no recession. So we really are in the midst of this deeply uncertain moment where even the people that are at the front lines of trying to decide what to make of this economic data are very much split equally in terms of what may be happening next. In terms of the battle against inflation then, um, do the chief economists think that we've seen now the worst of it and that ultimately we are going to see the numbers come down? Because, again, that's another factor in your job story, that input costs have gone up so much that some companies will just be laying off because they don't want to pay the higher costs. So where are, where are your chief economists on inflation? So we're starting to see that there's actually rising concern that inflation will stay quite high. So there's still a fairly, um, a, the majority of chief economists, over 90% are expecting inflation to stay quite high in Europe for inflation to stay relatively high in the US. The only sort of outlier here is China where inflation is expected to stay quite low in the next few, few months ahead. And one of the reasons that's feeding into this is because most chief economists are expecting that central banks will have to play a very delicate dance between wanting to bring down inflation further and the financial stability concerns that have also arisen in the last few months. So they're expecting this trade-off to get worse. In fact, about 76% expect that trade-off to get worse. And therefore, consequently, about three quarters also expect that inflation will stay fairly high or at least central banks will not be able to move fast enough on bringing it down. So just tying up all the issues we've discussed already, my concern, and I wonder if the World Economic Forum's concern, is that actually central banks and especially policy makers at a government level are using all their capital to try and mitigate the cost of living crisis, to save the banks, to, to make sure there isn't some form of debt crisis, rather than spending the money which, let's face it, there isn't infinite quantities available, rather than spending the money on digitization, on green transition, on actually future-proofing the workforce with better education as well. My concern is they're concentrating on the former rather than the latter. I think there's a mixed picture there. There is actually an enormous amount of spending happening in terms of the green transition. Um, you know, industrial policy is in vogue in advanced economies in a way that we haven't quite seen in the last few decades. So there is a lot more of that spending happening. It is a lot more directed towards national security goals towards geopolitical conflicts, but it's also meant to try to drive forward the kind of innovation that can help mitigate the climate crisis. Now, on the one hand, that's all very good, but the jury's out as to whether that's really going to drive the right kind of innovation, whether that's simply going to create more geopolitical fault lines. And on that second point, it is very clear that a similar commensurate level of investment is not happening in developing human capital. And that's what's going to leave people behind because they will not have those green skills for those rising green jobs and they will not have skills for some of the other sectors that are not quite getting the same level of investment but are also going to be big job creators in the future, whether that's education or agriculture um, or, or other areas where there's going to be growth. 